Amen. God bless you all this morning. Beautiful day the Lord's given to us. Amen. Let us all stand and we'll invite him into our midst this morning with prayer. Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful to be your children this morning, Father Lord, for the things that you've done for us this week, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that we can truly set this time aside this morning, Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father. The things that are said and done this morning, Father, may they just be glorifying to you, Father. And, Lord, our whole heart's desire is to please you this morning. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you're in our midst this morning. Lord, may your presence be felt in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> Number 77. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. <clears throat> O oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Into life everlasting He passed and we follow Him there <clears throat> Over us sin hath no more dominion For more than conquerors we are Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. <clears throat> then go to a world that is dying. His perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Before we go to prayer, I wanted to share this quote with you this morning that was on the quote of the day and the scripture they had going with it. And he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. I don't know if this will actually come through the PA system, but. Even our altar calls that we had and bringing people up around the altar, 
and to do that in the Bible time, that's a tradition of our people. It originated for them in the Baptist church. But look, it's a good thing. I don't like this dry repentance. I like to see somebody get up and really be sorry for what they've done. And really mean it. But no matter how much that you pray, you'll never be forgiven until you believe you're forgiven. Then you confess that you are, then live like you are. Amen. Now, it's kind of a, a little bit odd, but all scripture, and I believe the word has a dual, dual meaning. Now, it will never do you any good until you accept it. So, along with our prayer request this morning, and but no matter how much you pray, you'll never be forgiven until you believe you're forgiven. And no matter how much you think you're healed until you believe that you feel that you are healed, it will never happen. Amen? So before we take our prayer request before the Lord, is there a spoken prayer request this morning? Continue to remember them in prayer for the Lord's guidance. Amen. And uh, believe it will work out for them, especially if they have an open heart for the message. Amen. <clears throat> Any other spoken prayer requests this morning? Okay. Remember them in prayer as they travel. God to give them a relaxing trip. Okay. <laughs> I remember uh, them in prayer as they travel out here to, back to Ohio. <clears throat> Sister Patty's friend Sharon, I believe, continue to remember her in prayer. And uh, any other spoken prayer requests this morning? Amen. Let's continue to remember Sister Becky, Sister Mary Hoffman for healing, Brother Billy Paul and his wife and family for health. Brother Roger Gerard in Tucson, our uh, believers in India, for uh, continued to remember them in prayer. Brother Mark Bailey and his family and our, the believers in South Africa. Brother Larry Jeffords in West Virginia. And Brother Joseph Branham in the Voice of God. And also for our brothers here, I mean, they have family back home too, so remember them in prayer that God keeps their family safe. And all our unspoken prayer requests this morning can be known by an uplifted hand. And we'll take these requests to the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do appreciate, Lord, the sacrifice that was made at Calvary, Lord, and the, the, pay, the price that was already paid, Father. Not even there, but before the world, of the, the foundation of the world, Father. So, Lord, these requests that we bring before you this morning, Father, for the guidance in one's life, Father, and the directions that they should go, Father, we pray, Lord, that you would open a clear path for them, Father, that they would know what's your will. Lord, and Lord, for those that don't know you this morning, Father, that we've mentioned before you, Lord, we pray, Lord, that they would find you. <clears throat> and Lord, may you make yourself known to them, mainly, Lord, through the lives that are here on earth, Lord, and that's us, Father. As we live a life before these people, Father, we pray, Lord, that they see something different. Lord, that's worthy of your gospel this morning, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for those that are sick in their body this morning, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would increase our faith. Lord, that we could believe that your promise, Lord, to us is real for this hour. Amen. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you would just touch each and every one, Lord, for those that need uh, the health in their body, for Brother Billy Paul and his family, Brother Joseph and the voice of God, and all those that endeavor to seek Lord, and do your will, Lord, by spreading this gospel, Lord, in the late hour. We, Father, we pray, Lord, that that last seed would be found, Lord, that we could all go home. For those that need traveling mercies, Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would compass them about, Father, as they travel down the road and keep them safe, Father. For the lifted hands and the desires that are upon our hearts, Father, you know them each one, Father. Even though we didn't speak them out to you, Father, you know our hearts this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would just grant them according to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Number 127. <clears throat> Are you washed in the blood? <clears throat> 
Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for those mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? I'll be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the souls unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, be washed in the blood in that soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Brother Don and Brother Steve, if you would come this morning, we'll take up our tithe and offering. <clears throat> Amen, Brother Steve, if you'd ask the Lord's blessing this morning. While they're taking that up, you can turn in your only believe book to 138, The Solid Rock. <clears throat> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, His covenant, His blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all my life my soul gives way, He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. 
All other ground is sinking sand When he shall come with trumpet sound Oh, may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Amen. Aren't you glad you have something to build on? you got to know these old songs were definitely inspired of the Lord because if you just read the verses, they match up with his word pretty good. Amen? The last verse, When he shall come with trumpet sound, O may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness, faultless to stand before the throne. Amen? We know that the word is getting us more perfected every day. Amen? We want to be ready when he comes. Let us stand and we'll sing only believe as we ask Brother Brian to come. Only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, only believe, only believe that all things are possible. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. All things are possible now that you're here. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. Let all things are possible. Now that you're here, only believe, only believe, all things are possible, only believe, only believe, only believe. Only believe Jesus, you're here Jesus, you're here All things are possible Now that you're here Jesus, you're here Jesus, you're here, and all things are possible now that you're here. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we are such a privileged people, Lord, to have this opportunity to come to you this morning in spirit and in truth, and knowing that your presence is here among us, for we have a promise from a vindicated prophet that said that the pillar fire will lead us to the millennium. Therefore, just as you led the children of Israel after Moses went off the scene, you led them into the promised land. We believe, Father, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, our Joshua, is still here leading, bringing us into full recognition as sons. And so, Father, we just ask that you would help us, O God, as we open the word this morning, that we're not here in vain, O God, but we're here to learn and to look at you and focus upon you and your life knowing that we as men were mortal we can make mistakes but yet your word cannot make any mistake even hearing your prophet say it so many times that he made mistakes and yet he said your word cannot fail and so lord we as men we are mortal but you are the immortal king and we are your children and having your anointing upon us then it is your life it is your logos, it is your word 
that moves within us. For it is God in us working both to will and to do. That's what you said, Father. And therefore we believe it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we're going to look at the human veil, the human temple, and how the anointing of God is actually a person, Brother Bram says it's God himself. Now, as I mentioned last Sunday before closing out on paragraph 103, that we're going to turn a corner in the next few paragraphs of the unveiling of God as we begin to examine the next few paragraphs, we're going to see Brother Bram turning a corner himself in the sermon as he moves from the vessel, he moves from the veil to the anointing upon the veil, which is God himself. So just bear with me as we examine these next few paragraphs very intently because you'll see that the same anointing, the same Logos that was God in the beginning and came into his firstborn son, that same Logos when it come upon sons it will produce the very same works and it, uh, uh, that it produced in the pillar of fire which is the anointing, which is the life of God, which is the Logos, the word God himself. Now, Brother Brown said the same pillar of fire that was over the children of Israel, he said that same pillar of fire entered into Jesus, he said that was Jesus in Jesus. That's a beautiful quote, because Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. See, too many people don't understand the difference, and they get hung up on the vessel. They get hung up, they get hung up on the vessel of Jesus, the man, and they try to make him God, the Son, instead of the Son of God. But he was both God and man because God lived in him. Brother Brown said he was a dual being. And yet you and I, in essence, because when we're born again, we receive his spirit as well. So we, in essence, are a dual being as well. Although it's not the person of God, but it's the life of God that's in us. Just like uh, any child that's born into the world, the life of their father gives them birth. All right. <clears throat> so we're looking at then at this um, anointing, which is the very life, the Logos, the Word of God coming into us. Now, Brother Brown describes the anointing as a pillar of fire and as Logos. Well, we know the word Logos, it means the Word. John 101, in the beginning was the Word, and that word there, the Greek word is Logos. So, in the beginning was the Logos, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos was God. Now, the full Greek definition of the word Logos is quite long, but there is a common thread in all, in all the definitions of the word Logos. It means something said, it, and, and so it means something said, it includes the thought, and by, and, you know, because many people, they speak, but they don't think what they're saying. But the word logos means that they're actually the thought is actually expressed, okay? It means something said and includes the thought, and by implication, a topic. In other words, just not mumble jumble, all right? The subject of a discourse. Also, it means reasoning and includes the mental faculty or the motive. Now, that's important. Or the motive and, by extension, a computation. And especially with the article with the, article the uh, that we read in John, the divine expression, Christ. It means Christ. The Logos means Christ. Account, cause, communication, concerning doctrine, and this is the interesting because Brother Brown said Christ is the doctrine. Then the word Logos also means fame, and it has to do with intent. And we've already seen that it also speaks of the motive and the matter, and, and then the matter, and, and the mouth, and preaching, question, reasoning, reckon, remove, saying, uh, the word show, speaker, speech, talk, sing in reference to when the word thing is used as an example, none of these things move me. Tidings, treatise, utter, utterance, word, and work. So <clears throat> you can see it, it encompasses a whole lot, but really what it's to do, what it's encompassing is, is the essence of the motive and the objective of the thought coming into an expression, whether it's through work or whether it is through speech. So you can see all of these definitions of the word logos, the common thread is the expression or the anointed expression of the thought as it is manifested through speech, words, or works. Now, never forget the scripture teaches us in Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he, speaking of men. And Jesus said in Matthew 12, 34, and Luke 6, 45, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So as a man is in his heart, thus he'll speak. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So <clears throat> we're looking at the Logos as being the very anointing, which expresses itself in the speech and subsequent works. It expresses the intentions and motives of the author himself, who through the energy of his expression is also the finisher. So it has to do with the willing and doing, as Paul taught us in Philippians 2.13, for it is God working in you, that is the energy of God, working in you to will. Notice he says the first thing is to will and then to do. Because if you don't have the will, you're not going to do. And if you don't have the intention or the motive, you're not going to have the will. Notice... 
If you do not have the intent and motive, you won't have the will. But once you have both the intent and the motive, then having the will, it puts you into action to do. So the Logos is the anointing which anoints you to the intent and motive, and thus the saying and doing his perfect will. In fact, the word motive means something that causes a person to act in a certain way, to do a certain thing, etc. Incentive. So the motive is the anointing that causes the action and produces the expression. Now that's very important. The motive, the, 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 the motive is the anointing that causes the action and produces the expression. I think it's interesting how God moves us to do certain things and even to play certain tapes on Wednesday nights. And last Wednesday night, we listened to Brother Brown's questions and answers, kind of, uh, Oric Doctrine, uh, August 23rd of 64. And I want you to see how that he shows us concerning the anointing, because he also gets into this, we're, we're going to get into this word anointing in the unveiling God this morning in the next few paragraphs. But before we do, I'm going to kind of do a little preamble here. So the first, first uh, let me just read from questions and answers. Dr. and Dr. says, I am not a Messiah. See, Messiah is Jesus Christ, but we are Messiahs, every one of us. Messiah, Messiah means anointed one. And in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In me just dwells part of his spirit, the same as dwells in you. <clears throat> so when people try to put on you that Brother Branham, that God was living in Brother Branham, no, 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 no. The God life of Brother Branham, the same God life that's in you, in a portion. The fullness of the Godhead was not in Brother Branham. It was only in one person, that's Jesus Christ. Because the fullness of the Godhead is God himself. Otherwise, you have his spirit, you have his anointing, you have his logos, you have his word. And remember, never, never dissect the word from spirit, because he said, my words are spirit, and they are truth. Okay? Now notice this, in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily, in me, that's Brother Bram speaking, just dwells part of his spirit, the same as dwells in you. I've been given a gift to know little things and foresee things, that makes me just still your brother. See, I am not no Messiah, I am your brother, see, just a shepherd to the flock. And if I told you I was the Messiah, I would be a liar. Then in paragraph 53, he says, and now, what was that other question? I, I, I got so wound up in these things, I forget uh, what the things were. One of them was, was I the son of man? And, and, and here, here it is, I believe, the son of man, or was the pillar of fire the son of man? No, the pillar of fire is the anointing, the pillar of fire. Now, this may go a little deep unless it's some of you theologians, Brother Vale probably here, and some of you, these ministers from Arkansas, and my good friends around, uh, they probably know. Now, that pillar of fire is the Logos, that went out of God, the Logos, which is actually the attribute of the fullness of God, when God became into a form to where it could be seen. It was the anointing of the great spirit that went forth. It's condescending down, coming down, God the Father, the Logos, that was up over Israel. He was holy, could not bear sin. There had to be a blood offering right in Eden. Then that Logos became flesh and dwelt among us, and, and where this Logos dwelt in a human body, which was the sacrifice. All right, so the human body was Jesus the Son. Question, paragraph 54, next one. When man was made in the image of God, and when and God came down in the image of man to redeem man, that brought man and God back together. Heavens and earth hugged and kissed each other. God and man embraced each other as fatherhood and sonship when the Logos became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus said, I came from God, I go to God. Is that right? After his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, when the body was taken up to set at the right hand of God. Now, I don't mean God's got a right hand, God's a spirit but at the right hand means in power and authority of God. <clears throat> That's in the name everything, that, that in that name, everything in heaven is named after it and subject to it. Everything in earth is named after it and subject to it. A name above all names, Jesus Christ. Now, the Logos that was in him, which was the Spirit of God, the anointing, through the sanctifying grace of the blood, brought many sons to God, which is anointed with this same Logos. Write that down, all right? anointed with this same Logos. So God is a Logos. The fullness of that Logos entered his son. Now that, that, that and then uh, on the day of Pentecost, when God came down, that pillar of fire came down and, and split himself up into, you know, 120 pieces, although God didn't, look, <clears throat> God didn't divide himself to the place where there was no more God, and it was now God in 120 pieces. When you take a, a, a candle, or when you take a torch and you light 120 candles, the torch doesn't get smaller, right? The torch is still the same. When a man has 120 kids, if it's possible, and I'm sure it is because, you know, in the Old Testament, many of these guys did, but uh, they didn't get smaller. David had 500 children one year. He didn't get smaller. Probably his head got bigger, you know? 
but, but he didn't get smaller. And, and when we receive the, the Logos, we, it doesn't diminish God any. It, adds, it, it actually adds to him. All right. I mean, it's because his life is expanded now. From questions and answers, again, paragraph 55. Now, on the day of Pentecost, it come down, that pillar of fire and broke, that, broke like that, and tongues of fire set upon each of them. Not their tongues, but tongues of fire set upon each of them. A, ele a elected, selected group identified by this pillar of fire, showing that God had separated himself into man. Do you get it? God the Logos separated himself into men, not in one person. He's in his church universe. See, he was in one person in Jesus. But now, after the day of Pentecost, he's in his church universal. Now, that's not the person of God. That's the God life. That's the reason Jesus said, the works that I do shall you do also more. Now, I know the King James is greater, but the, the right translation there is more than this shall you do. God was bottled and confined in one man, Jesus Christ. Now he's bottled and confined in the whole universal church of the living God right, right now. While God is here speaking with us in our heart, he's in Africa, he's in Asia, he's in Europe, he's in England. Wherever believers are gathered together, there he is in their midst. <clears throat> now, this, this Logos is the very life, the, the very energy of God, which is what anoints. And the physical manifestation of the entire Logos was, was a pillar of fire. But when that life was distributed into me and into you, each had a lick of fire representing that anointing, that God life was upon him. That's why when Brother Vell came to Brother Brown the first time, Brother Brown said, I see that a lick of fire over your head. Now, it wasn't the pillar of fire. It was a lick of fire. All right. And, and people say, oh, oh that's, a, you know, wow. Now, uh, that, that makes Brother Vell, you know, um, uh, Brother Brown's successor. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It just means that he's got the Holy Ghost. All of you, if, if you've got the Holy Ghost, there's a lick of fire over your head. There has to be, or God, is, God changes. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's got to be. You know, I could give testimony after testimony of people that have seen those kind of things. So, you know, 120 people on the day of Pentecost had that lick of fire over their head. A bunch of them were women. And they weren't ministers. They weren't called to the ministry. But they were women. So when we try to make some great big deal out of, uh, out of something Brother Brown says about that lick of fire, well, it is a big deal. I mean, that, that, make, that gives us a testimony of Jesus Christ, okay? But let's just settle down to earth, okay? And the other, the other thing I want to, and, and I want to spend some time on, uh, today is not the time for it. But I've been going through different things where Brother Bram says, you know, I make mistakes. I'm human. I, you know, but God's word doesn't make mistakes. He said the difference between a Christian and others. He said, we're, 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 as Christians, we're going to make mistakes. But God, he said, God, don't look at your mistakes. He looks at the sacrifice for your mistakes. You see? But he that sinneth willfully. And remember, sinning is a disbelief. He that disbelieves willfully. Now that's sin. But I would say, I would venture to say that 99.9999999999% of your mistakes, the times when you do something is wrong, the Holy Ghost comes and convicts you. Those are just human error. You're just caught up in, like, you know, people say, oh, you lied. No, I just forgot. They want to call it, hey, look, people have so much tension on them today. Look at, look at what's happening with the Republicans and the Democrats. I mean, it's just, you know, throw mud here, throw mud there, throw mud here, throw mud there. Why can't we as Christians realize that we have the blood of Jesus Christ and the mercy of God to forgive us of our sins? You know, I, I mean, people think, well, you're a pastor, so you shouldn't make mistakes. Listen, I'm a human being. Are you going to try to relegate me to the Son of God? I'm not the Son of God. I didn't die for your sins. I'm a human being. I make mistakes. I don't willfully do things wrong. I, I try not to. But being a human being, having Irish descent, <laughs> or whatever descent, could be Polish, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter what your descent is. You're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come forth to the world speaking lies. You have a body. And until you get a change of the body, you're going to have troubles. But that's what the Holy Ghost is for, is to point you back to the Word, to the Logos. He anoints us to the Logos, to the Word. And then, when God the Logos, in its entirety, entered his first son, born son, that was what John saw. That pillar of fire come down like a dove, rested upon Jesus, the firstborn son, and entered him. 
Then he did the same works that his father did. Remember, he said, the son doeth nothing but what the father shows me to do. So the father's doing, and then he does. And then when the same Logos, in a measure, <clears throat> enters into sons, they produce the very same works that Jesus did, for it was the Logos, the anointing in him that did those things, and he just stepped into the vision and he acted out what he said. We step into the word and act out what it says. <clears throat> that is why in John 5, 19, Jesus said, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he seeth the Father do, that's a vision, for what, what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that he himself is doing, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Now, so, <clears throat> so far, Jesus was ba uh, says basically, this is what he's saying. What the Father does, I do because I see the, how the Father does it, and then I follow suit. But then in the very next verse, he tells us why he can do what the Father does. For as, as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now, he's not saying whom I will, because Jesus walked past 300 people at the pool of Bethesda, and, and just, or the pool of Shalom, and, or Shalom, and he just prayed for one. And Brother Bram taught us, he said, that's because he only saw one person in the vision. All right, so he said, as the Father worketh, I worketh hither too. He didn't quicken whomsoever he willed, but whomsoever he willed. And that's the key right there. That's the key to the anointing upon you that brings you and the word together. And, you, and, your, and your action is a confirmation that that word is set in your heart. You understand? Okay. <clears throat> For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Now, and my reason for saying that is because Jesus only did what the Father showed him to do, and he even let, all, let go of his own will to do what the Father's will was. And the greatest test that he ever had was in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And then in verse 30, Jesus telling us the reason he can do whatever a Father shows him to do, and that is because he has the same will as a father which is the same intentions and, he, and motives that his father has. So he says, I can of my own self do nothing. Now can we all say that? I can of my own self do nothing. But as I hear, remember faith cometh by hearing, I judge. I listen with the intention of discerning and my judgment, my discernment is just. Is just. Why? Because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And if God is working in you both to will and to do, then it is apparent that the Logos in you is bringing you to the will of God, of God first before you can do the will of God or the work of God, as he worked also in Jesus the same way. Brother Brown the same way. Now listen, as Jesus continues, you will see how that he fully embraced his Father's will and did not even identify with himself, but rather was dead to himself and allowed any identification to be only with his father. Now that's where we're not yet, but we need to be there. He says, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. But there is another that beareth witness of me, and I know the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Now you sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I received not testimony from man, but these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to do, to finish, the same works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself, which has sent me, hath borne witness of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape, and you have not his word, his logos, his anointing, his intentions, his motives. You have not his will abiding in you. For whom he hath sent him, you believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them they you think that you have eternal life, and there they would testify me. <clears throat> in other words, he says, when I see what the Father is doing, and I step into it, and I do his will, that is a manifestation that God's presence is with me, and he is directing me, and I'm doing as he wishes to be done. That's what Jesus is saying, and that's my witness, that I'm telling you the truth. So the anointing of God, his logos, his life, his word, his energy, if it did in God, and then did in his son a certain thing, then it has to do the same thing as sons if it's the same anointing by the same spirit. Then it is your vessel that becomes the veil of God, his word, his anointing, his logos, becomes veiled in you. All right? So, now with this intro, 
Let's continue to read from Brother Bram's sermon, The Unveiling of God. We'll pick up at paragraph 104. He said, now, see, they couldn't believe it. Those Greeks, they couldn't see him. He was in his human temple. See, it's always the vessel that blinds the people. That's why Brother Vail always taught us. He said, get your eyes off the vessel and get your eyes on the God who is using the vessel. Those Greeks, they couldn't see him. He was in a human temple. Why? They said, this man's name is Jesus. He comes from Nazareth. Now, they only had one name there in them days, like John and Jim. Uh, they said John from Jeffersonville and Jim from New Albany or something like that, you see. Uh, he, he said, this is Jesus from Nazareth. It's, it's common belief that his mother was pregnant by a soldier, see? And then that's exactly what they believed, sure. And, and, and say they said, now, and this is G Jesus of Nazareth, you see, who is he? See, they couldn't understand. So they couldn't understand. But why? He says, but why? And that is a big question we need to know. Why? Why could they not understand him? From the unveiling God, paragraph 105. This word for, for, uh, this word for that day was, he was preaching and said, Search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, and they testify who I am. If you can't believe me being, or forget me as a vessel, believe the word that's coming forth. To as a witness, he said, I speak and the Father speaks for me. Amen. That's right. I speak of the word of this day, and the Father confirms it. Now, is that a witness to you? Oh, it is. See, that's how it, it's to be fulfilled. So the anointing upon the word is what is conf the confirmation of God's presence with you. Now, in a sermon, we will see Jesus, Brother Brown says, Now notice the first thing he did after his temptation in the wilderness, he came forth as the anointed Messiah, the, the Messiah, the Christ. Christ means the anointed one. He was born Jesus the man. But when the Holy Ghost come upon him, he was the anointed Messiah. The Bible said God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. It didn't say God was Christ. It says God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, God living in him, and the fullness of the Godhead was in him. And from his sermon, Why Christ Speak, Brother Bram says, Now, if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he doesn't change. Then he'll ha have to act in his church then. Now, how many knows that Christ is the, whole, is the Spirit of God? We all know that. He's the anointed one. Jesus was the anointed. There's where people who believe that there's three or four different gods gets all mixed up. See, God is a spirit. Jesus was the body that the Spirit of God dwelled in. Made him Emmanuel. God tabernacled on earth. He was God. Jesus Christ was God. Yet, he was the Son of God. His flesh was the Son of God. Because God created it, but inside, he was God. It's not me, Jesus said, that does the works. It's my Father that dwells in me. And that day you'll know that I'm in the Father, the Father in me. I in you, and you in me. There you are. All right? So when Jesus, when he was born, he was a son, a human being. Fully human, which means he had a body, soul, and spirit. Yet at the River Jordan, when God entered him, he became Jesus the Christ, a dual being because he was Jesus the man and now he was Jesus the anointed man, the anointed one. And, and we showed you last week how that the Holy Ghost, the very anointing of God, the Logos, came into him and after that he went about performing miracles. You, you don't hear of one miracle that Jesus did until after he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now to one that's thinking, to hear me say that Jesus was baptized with the Holy Ghost. They think that's crazy, but Brother Branham said it. In fact, the Bible says it. It says, this same Jesus whom God hath anointed. And after God anointed him, he went about doing good things. You see? <clears throat> and many miracles. There were no miracles before he received the Holy Ghost. The Logos of God that John saw come down in the form of the pillar of fire that descended like a dove. John did not say it was a dove. He said he saw the light come down as a, dive, as a dove would come down. He saw the pillar of fire descend as a dove would descend. Not abruptly, like a hawk that hits, that hits all, uh, all of his prey suddenly, or, or, or with a burst of speed like an eagle descending upon a target. You know, how many have ever seen a, a, picture, a film of an eagle come down, and, I mean, or a hawk, and they'll hit that rabbit or whatever the target is, and they'll, do, they'll roll right with it. It's brutal. God didn't come down that way. He came down very gently like a dove. How many have ever seen a dove come down to light upon a, a tree limb? He just comes down, kind of hovers there, and just kind of settles. God is, that's God's nature. It's peaceful, graceful, full of mercy. You see? So John said, I saw it as a dove. You see, as a, as a dove, as which means in the same manner as, we see that the same word spo uh, spoken in, in, in the four Gospels. 
Now, I know all four Gospels use the same word, like a dove, but it is speaking of the descending process and the literal way it came down and settled upon Jesus, like a dove descending. So the motion is the same, gentle and peaceful-like. Now, from his sermon fellowship, Brother Bram said, Messiah is a miracle worker. He is, he is yet. He's always been, certainly. The Messiah was anointed one. The anointed one today is a Messiah church. This church, this church of the newborn. This church has come down through the water. Faith cometh by hearing, through the blood, cleansed life, through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Holy Ghost is the anointed one, the Messiah church, glory. Why Messi Messiah church will have signs of the Messiah in it, sure. It's because the Messiah church, it is the church of the Messiah. Okay, so he's talking about the anointed church, the church anointed by the same Logos that anointed the firstborn son. Now, next we read from the unveiling of God, paragraph 106. Brother Brown says, now notice in 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, the sixth verse, the old temple housed God behind old skins from the Jews. When the old veil was rent, still the Jews blinded to who he was and who, who he is yet. And then Pentecost revealed who the true living God was. When that veil was cut in two with, uh, with God from, from the top, why did the veil do that? Why did it do that? Why did there come such a message today to do what is done? Why did it come? Why did it? Well, we're going to get to that in just a minute, but from the Messiah, Brother Brown said, I want to take five-letter word for our text. M-E-M-E-S-S-I-A-S, -E -S -S Messiahs. I want my subject tonight to be around the word Messiah. The word itself means the anointed one, or it could be used the anointed king, and it also means Christ. But we're going to use it first in this thought of the anointed. Now, let's go back because we're covering a lot of ground here. Brother Brown said earlier we read the, uh, the Logos is the anointing, and the Logos is the word. Therefore, it is the word that is the anointing. I remember having a conversation one time years ago with a certain brother who said I can't believe how uh, you know how, how brother Vale could have so much word and, and so little spirit and I said brother you got it all wrong I said the amount of spirit or the amount of word is the amount of spirit oh I don't believe that I said well John turned to see the to, to, to see the voice and he saw the spirit all right so don't tell me that the word you can separate the word from the spirit when Jesus said my words are spirit and they're truth now we might be all fashioned in a certain way to do a certain job you know you don't pick a little scrawny little torpy little guy to do heavy lifting you, you would select someone who's big and brawny and has muscles to do the lifting well God Brother Branson makes every preacher, he makes her personality to ring the bell in a certain way so it'll get the message across. And Brother Bram told Brother Vale, he said, Brother Vale, God made you to be that way because, because uh, he gave you the intellect and these things so that it would get into colleges and these things so that people that you know, are in those realms could understand, okay? So God makes you the way you are. And uh, he, he, look, he put your DNA together, you know? So... Just be thankful that you are who you are. And if your DNA is different from somebody else's DNA, praise the Lord. God's got a variety. All right. But notice the Messiah, the word itself, the anointed one. It, it could be used anointed king. And, and it also means Christ. But we're going to use its first in this thought of the anointed king. It appears first in Genesis 3.15. If you want to put some scriptures down, the promised seed of the woman, which was to be the anointed one. All through the scripture, all the prophets speaking of that coming one, the anointed king. I like the word anointed, God anointing one. And he was to be a king who would lead Israel to freedom from all the nations and make them rulers over the nations. <clears throat> the anointed king was to do that. I believe that Jesus of Nazareth fulfilled every description that all the prophets spoke of to be the Messiah. I believe that in Isaiah 9 and 6, when Israel had asked for a sign, God said, I'll give them an everlasting sign, a sign, an eternal sign, one that would be forever. It said, a virgin shall conceive. That would be a sign. And that one that will be born of her, his name shall be called the Counselor, Prince of Peace, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And I believe that Jesus spent every description of every promise that Jehovah made as a coming King and Messiah. Okay, so then from the Messiah, he continues in paragraph 15. It says, theologians, so well read in the scriptures, so particular about their scriptures, and yet they fail to see him, to be the anointed one. 
It sounds though it could not have happened. Looks like they would have known him so well versed. But God blinded their eyes. It shows that it was the hand of God. He was too plainly known. His sign of Messiah proved him to be Messiah, proved him to be the anointed one. And for them to miss it, it sure had to be the hand of God to blind them, that they did not miss it, or, or where they would not have missed it, rather. And it's the same thing today. If the gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are blind. And the only thing, the only way that they can receive sight is through God. Now, like I said, I've been doing this study, um, Brother Josh, um, um, Gatch, uh, not Gatch, uh Brother um, uh, Josh Jager, uh, sent me a, a quote, sh you know, showing where Brother Bram said, you know, I, I, I make mistakes, but God doesn't. He, you know, God is. So I, I kind of did a, 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 a search and found just hundreds of times where Brother Branham said the same thing. He said, uh, you know, he said, look, I'm, I'm a human being. I'm a mortal. I make mistakes. But he said, God can't make mistakes. This word can't make mistakes. Now, the problem we have is a lot of people left the message because they said, well, Brother Branham said a wrong date over here. And Brother Bram said over here uh, 700 and not 7,000. And over here he made a mistake over here, so he can't be that. So he can't be a vindicated prophet of God. Show me one vindicated prophet of God in the Bible that didn't make mistakes. Now, when it comes to this word, and when it comes to "Thus saith the vision," or "Thus saith the Lord," they didn't make mistakes. But as a human being, they all make mistakes. You and I all make mistakes. Let's face it, I mean, look, all you got to do is be married to have them pointed out to you every day. Right? But we're human beings. So get your eyes off the vessel. Get your eyes on what God is doing using that vessel. If, if God only does one or two things, praise God for it. If he does a hundred things, praise God for it. If he does a thousand things, praise God for it. Quit fussing. Until you're out of this body of this nature that you know that, that that dual nature that you have until you're rid of this body of flesh you're going to make mistakes brother Bram said there's no perfection this side of the resurrection so get over it brother Bram was not perfect oh that's offensive no it's not offensive he said it he said there's only one that's perfect and that's God only one that doesn't make mistakes that's God now, the Christian won't willfully sin. He won't go out there and fornicate. He won't go out there and commit adultery. Not willingly, but even David got trapped. Did certain things that he got trapped in. Those are mistakes, but he repented quickly. And, and if, you know, if, if, if the Holy Spirit's in you, he said, if you be any otherwise minded, he'd reveal it to you. So you'll repent. You won't go around, you know, uh, finding little things to pick at. That's not the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. That's the devil that picks. It's the devil. He's the accuser of the brethren. So just stop it. Now, notice he said, it's the same thing today. If the gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are blind, and the only way that they can receive sight is through God. Then in paragraph 61, he says, then when God was made flesh and became the Messiah, then if we can yield ourselves to be the anointed like he, like he was, we become Messiah's little lights. That's what the church is supposed to be, lights, little anointed ones. That's God's church. He's, his standing light is the light of Messiah, risen Christ in his people, the anointed ones, carrying forth his light into all the church ages. Sometimes this almost goes completely out. Uh, then it comes back again. God's anointed one, God's Messiah church. If Messiah means the anointed one and means king, then if the church is anointed by the Messiah spirit, it becomes a lesser but still a Messiah because it has his light reflecting his power, reflecting his glory, reflecting his dominion. So it is Messiah. Oh, how it reflects him in his kingdom and his domain. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham is going to say something here that's very startling to a lot of people. Because, you know, Brother Branham says, they, if you are Messiah, yes, you will do the sign of Messiah. But, he says, the sign of Messiah for the prophet is one thing. The sign of Messiah for the people is another. That's what I want you to understand. All right? Now, what he's telling us here is that this anointing, which is the Logos of God, the same Logos of God that expressed itself in his firstborn son, is to express itself once again in his church. That's why Paul speaks of manifested sons of God that is supposed to be this side of the resurrection, not after it's all over. From what think ye of Christ, brother, I said, now, what are we going to need miracles in the millennium for when we're supernatural beings, see? How are we going to need those things? Now, the Bible said, now are we sons of God. Not now. 
it, now a present tense. Now are we sons. Not we will be, we are now. We are this morning, we are this very hour. Now we are sons of God, seated together, set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Right this very minute, we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Every man, by one spirit we're all baptized into one body, become members of this body by Holy Spirit baptism. And now we're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, free from judgment. We can never go to the judgment. How can you be judged twice? God judged Jesus Christ and put our judgment upon Christ, and Christ paid our judgment at Calvary. And if we're in Christ, we're secured in Christ, how do we get into Christ? By one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. Is that right? So, if the blood has been applied, and Brother Brant, and I'd like to quote that uh, Brother Justin read this morning, if we've accepted that uh, forgiveness and that blood, that atonement, they says, then live it. Move on. All right. Now, he continues, says, but we need Messiah light. What the church needs today, the light of the Messiah. Oh, I love him for his goodness. Now, <clears throat> that is true. God called Messiah. God called us, and we become kings and priests unto God, like Jesus was God's high priest. We become a lesser priest. Jesus was God in the fullness, dwelt in him to shine forth the expression of God to the world, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. And as God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, God comes into his church and anoints him some messiahs. Oh my, do you see it? The same, thing, the same things he did is in his church. What's doing that? The Logos. The anointing. Don't you see you're just a veil? Listen, this is great. The same power he had in his church, and his church becomes his dominion. And he's king over this dominion, and we are kings and priests, offering spiritual sacrifices to God, the fruits of our lips, giving praise to his name. Amen. Oh my. There you are. Messiahs, Messiahs, little Messiahs, little anointed ones, anointed off of what? The main one. Anointed off the great one. Oh, when Jesus was on earth, they, they could not deny him being the Messiah because he had the sign of Messiah. Now the Jew was blinded and that's the reason they didn't see him and, and, and see his signs as Messiah. That's what the matter with the church tonight is blinded, the outside world. They can't see it because the God of this earth has blinded their eyes to the things that are spiritual. Oh, if we could only understand Jesus went about and did the signs of Messiah and the people blasphemed him. And if they blaspheme the great anointed king Messiah, how much more will they call them of his household, of his kingdom, Beelzebub's and whatever more they call him, and they call, and they call you worse than that, holy roller and holy jumper and, and something or another. They always got a scandalous name for it because it comes from the devil. And they called him, them of his household. He said, more than they, if they called him that, what would they call them of his household? But still, it makes just the same. Now you say, Brother Bram, Jesus had the sign of Messiah. How do we know? Uh, how do we know what was the sign? Well, when he come, the Bible said that when the Messiah come, he would be a prophet and would show signs of the prophet. And his scripture teacher knows that. Moses said, the, the Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like an unto me. And, those, and when he performed those signs of following himself, like in chapter 4 here, when he told the woman she had five husbands and she said, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. We know that when Messiah comes, he will tell us those things. He said, I am he that speaks to you. She ran into the city and told all the men of the city, Come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the very Messiah? Jesus said himself, If I do not the works of my father, then believe me not. Now, if I claim to have the anointing and do not the works of God, because I, I am anointed by him, with him, it's not me that doeth the works, uh, that the Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And if I do not them works, then don't believe me. But if I do them, believe me. Now, that was for Messiah. For Messiahs, the church, here it, here it comes. Are you ready? John, St. John, John, John 14, 12. There's your sign of Messiah. Or Messiah. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, Messiah S. That's right, Messiah S. The representation of Messiah on earth, Mark 16. He said, Go ye, off, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. These signs shall follow the Messiahs. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. How far? To all the world. To who? To every creature. Oh, I'm so glad. How are you going to rub, rub that out? Well, they've tried. said, It's just only to the disciples. To the disciples, he said, to all the world, to every creature, these signs shall follow them that believe. I wonder where people that don't believe in signs and wonders following the believers, how would you ever read the history of the church and think it ceased with the apostles? 
you know, back when we were kind of going through that little thing on uh, understanding of the uh, John 14, 12, I showed you Martin and Malachi and, and all the way, all the church messengers, every one of them, there were signs and wonders. Even John Wesley, you know, had a horse broke his leg on a journey, and uh, he just he had to get to where he was going to preach, so he just laid hands on the horse, and God healed the broken leg. And then he rode another hundred and some miles. So, you know, to, to get to the place. So, you know, God's children are anointed and how can you be a ch look if you're not anointed with the Holy Ghost then you're not a child of God right because you're anointed with his life that makes you a child then if you're anointed with his life which is the Logos which is the word then the same actions the same things are going to happen it's got to happen and he said that's your sign of being a Messiah he said Jesus sign and a prophet sign is to you know to to, the, to to be able to tell the very thoughts and intents of the heart but he said your sign is john 14 12. that's perfect i i, I love it because that shows that you're on your way you, you're born again and you're growing up coming into the image of the father of the firstborn son so that you can be so much like the father because firstborn son was in the image of the father but you're always about your father's business and god anoints you equips you for your life as a christian John 14, 12, that's what it's about. God equipping you through, through the... And Brother Ram said, when he defined, when Jesus said, he that believeth on me, he said, you can't be a believer until you're filled with the Holy Ghost. And he shows us this, this scripture in 1 John, tells us. So, anointed ones, them anointed with the Holy Spirit, he was anointed with, he was anointed with. So, God is a great anointer, the, the Logos, that Logos went into his son, then into sons. All right, anointed ones, them anointed with the same spirit, he was anointed. Now you're going to say, well, yeah, but there's false anointed ones at the end time. Well, that's true. That has nothing to do with a Christian. They have an anointing on them. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. But what word are they preaching? Word of another age or word for the hour? That's how you tell the difference. Uh, one of them said, well, when my son said at the right hand and left hand, he said, can you drink the cup that I drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with? She said, yeah. And he said, you will, but the, kingdom is, uh, to, but the kingdom to sit at the right hand or to the left is not mine to give. So it showed that, that we could drink the same cup of persecution, be called bills of love or whatever it might be, and still be baptized with the same spirit he's baptized with. So if he was called Messiah, which he was, because he was anointed with that Holy Spirit, and any church that's anointed with the same Holy Spirit is a Messiah, et, a little smaller God. And someday, when this body is resurrected, I hope beforehand that God can get, can get a, a, a hold of a bunch of people that will manifest his power in every dimension that it will prove it to be in. Messiah, anointed one, a king to deliver, a king. You are kings and priests, kings, kings, kings to bring in, priests to minister to a Messiah. His, his sign was to follow in all ages, reflecting his light, his presence with his kingdom people. Now you, don't all have, now, you don't have to die to get this. You have to spiritually die, but you don't have to physically die. The inside is where God gets in control of you, and as he presses himself toward, uh, forward in you, don't let any root of bitterness, hatred, malice, or strife, that'll run him right back out again. Just get all the meanness and the superstitions and all the unbelief out of you. And every time you move out a little unbelief, God steps right in and takes over. So move out unbelief. Move out the fussing. Move out the, the, the maliciousness, you know, the attacks, the, the personal attacks, just to make a point. Forget it. From the Messiah again, he says, the man, what is he? He's got a hand like God. He's got an eye like God. He's got ears like God. He's got a body like God. He was fashioned after, uh, he was fashioned after God. He was, given, he was given an earth and a dominion. He was made God over the earth to rule the earth, a lesser God. God rules the universe, everything. But man was given the earth to rule the earth. He was a, a messiah. That's what he is tonight if he gets back to God. He is a messiah, a little messiah. If, he, if messiah means anointed one and you're anointed, then what are you? That's exactly right, a messiah. We call it that just for the word's sake till we get a little farther down in the scripture uh, to it. All right. And again, from paragraph, uh, well, I don't have it written down here. Anyway, he says, uh, God wants eaglets. He wants messiahs. He wants men and women who have signs and wonders, anointed ones. He wants a church that's filled with the Holy Ghost, a church reflecting him, the same yesterday, today, and forever. God didn't die. He just born a kingdom to get his messiahs in, in it. 
Amen. Every word he says, they say amen to it. That's right. Yes, sir. They look like him, and they act like him, and they believe it. Got, got the, the conductor moving right on out with signs and wonders following. That's Messiah. Messiah lives tonight. He isn't dead. He's alive forevermore. Now listen. <clears throat> Some of you, you say, well, you know, I don't have miracles like Brother Branham had and this and that. I would think you would have to be pretty spiritually blind not to see the hand of God in your life. It's not the big things, it's the little things. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Brother Bram, when he saw three leaves, when he opened the door and he saw three leaves going in a circle like that, he took his hat off and he prayed. Now, did he think that that was God? It reminded him of God. It took him right back to the word. When things happen in your life, It brings you right back to the Word, doesn't it? What is the Word? It's the Logos. What is the Logos? It's the anointing. What does that do when that happens and you go back to the Word? It anoints you. Hallelujah. And you make it through that whatever that ism that you're, or whatever that thing is that you're going through. You see? That's why the trials are be, you know, the trial of our faith is to be more precious than gold. Because every time there's a trial, it brings you right back to the Word. 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 And what does the word do? It anoints. It anoints. It anoints. And pretty soon you're shouting hallelujah. Amen. Now, again, paragraph 66. Christ was the fullness of God. He was the anointed Jehovah. He was Jehovah anointed body. Jesus of Nazareth. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And he died that he might sanctify these fallen human race and bring them back to sons of God again to be anointed ones, anointed with the Holy Spirit to anoint forth to reflect his kingdom until he returned all the way through the seven church ages. And then at the last age, we find him on the outside of his own church trying to get back in. But he promised that he would send a light in that day and we have found it, Lord. We have found it. And we see that it's the correct conductor because we looked the word, uh, because we hooked the, uh, the word that we believe that <clears throat> with the God of heaven who promised it. And find out that the current that performed the first sign comes right back again and performs the same Messiah signs. Again, he says, uh, so when he comes upon his church in the last days, what will it be? A pulled up group, a group of people anointed with the Spirit of God. They will be Messiahs, see? They'll be anointed ones. And if his Spirit is in them, they'll do the things that he did just exactly isn't that so you can't get away from John 14, 12. That's your sign that you're a Messiah, that you're an anointed one, that the Logos is living in you. Like I've told you, you know, there's, Brother Brown said there's three ways you know that it's of God. He says, first of all, you see it in the scriptures. Second of all, it's quickened to your spirit. Third of all, you see it come to pass. Then you know that that is the anointed word of God. And then what do you do? You step into it. You step into it. Like I said many, many times, Elijah, he put his hands on the boy's mouth and he prayed and the, and the boy was given life. Where did he get it from? God, the anointer, the Logos. In the beginning, God breathed into Adam the breath of lives. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so Elijah, he, he lays on the boy, puts his mouth in his mouth, his hands in his hands, he breathed into him and the boy comes back. Well, then Elisha, who had been following Elijah, when he was presented with a dead boy, he did this very same thing. When Malachi and when Martin, both of them, they did the very same thing. When William Bram did the very same thing, there was a man, I remember reading the story, he said the man was dead, he had died from tuberculosis, his entrails were coming out of his mouth. He said, I shoved those things back in his mouth and put my mouth on his mouth. He did the very same thing. God sets the pattern. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see the pattern. You see the scene developing out here. You see the pattern. You see it in the scripture. You say, okay, God, I'm seeing this thing developing here. I'm seeing that it's the same thing as what you said in your word. Now, help me to step into it and watch the word become alive to you. Hallelujah. He is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Messiah is the anointed one and we are his children. We have a lesser anointing. So as a Jehovah eagle is great eagle and we're eaglets. He's Messiah and with the same anointing are Messiahs. 
It's the same Logos that was in Jesus, the same Logos is in you and I, only by measure, but it's the same, it's got the same power. So, it's got the same power. What are you worried about? <clears throat> Paul said, if we have all faith to move mountains, right? Jesus said, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So whether you have all faith or whether you have the size of a mustard seed, it'll still move mountains. Right? A man that's born into the world at 40 pounds, if, if there be such a person, I, I know of one that was 20 pounds when he was born, the size of the sperm of that little, that, 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 that put together that little 20-year-old baby is the same size of a sperm, it's the same size that put together the little three-ounce baby, or a three-pound baby that was, you know, a preemie. The same electricity that's moving that fan is turning on these lights, is projecting onto the screen. It's the same electricity. The same faith you have for your business, or the same faith that you have for your, for your, for your, your food on your table, or, or for your job, is the same faith you have for healing. It's the same faith. There's only one faith, one Lord, and it's that faith in that one Lord. Hallelujah. Are you connected via the Logos, the anointing, or not? That's the whole question. And he says, we with the same anointing are Messiah. Yes, amen. Anointed. Messiah means the anointed one. Are you anointed? Amen. That's the question. Are you anointed? What with? The same spirit that he was anointed with. We have it in measure. He has it without measure. He was God made manifest, or ma God manifest in the flesh, and we're sons of God. Parts of him. Come on. Yes, sir. The very works that I do shall you do also. See, <clears throat> you know, people, you don't press into these things. It's sovereignly given, but if God lays it out before you, it, see, that's why it's so important to have that Logos, the Word, in you. Because if you know this scriptures, then when you see the scene, you say, I recognize that back here. I recognize what God did then. He's going to do the same. He's showing me the vision. This is God's book of visions. Brother Bram wrote down his you know, book of visions. This is God's book of visions right here. And when you see that, sign, that scene developing, and you know it's in the scripture. Now you know it in the scripture. It's quickening in your heart. Hey, this is your opportunity to be part of that word. You step into it. You listen. I, I've seen this too many times to, to, to doubt it. I've seen I've seen God change the weather. I've seen Him change, uh, 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 you know, the, the the temperature from 100 degrees down to 30 degrees in just a matter of a minute, a matter, or a matter of a few minutes. Just boom, it's done. I, I've seen God. I've seen the power of God in, in so many places. I've seen Him turn tornadoes. I've seen Him do everything. Because he's God. But you gotta, you got to just be like a child and have faith. Lord, you did it here. Why won't you do it? You're going to do it for me because it's the same word. It's the same logos. Therefore, it's the same anointing. doesn't matter what vessel it's on. It's God. All right. For message of grace said he's a high priest making intercession upon our confession. Now, a lot of you Bible readers say, well, that's profess and profess and confess is the same word. See, made the high priest in the book of Hebrews, third chapter, now making intercession upon our confession. Then he can't do nothing until first we confess that he's done it. There you go. See, you get down here at the altar and pray all night. Wouldn't do you a bit of good until you believe that he forgives you. Then you stand up. Then as much faith as you have, that's where you, you, you lived once way down here in the muck of sin. Now, you young converts, now you believe that you're saved, don't you? Then you raised up here, you raised a little higher. What does that? Your faith, because you believe you're a Christian now. You live above that now thing now. See? Now, if you want to raise a little higher, just have more faith, because it's unlimited. Just keep on. Well, oh, uh, an, impossible, uh, an impossible can be made a, a real. All things are possible to them that believe. That's right. If you say to this mountain, be moved, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe what you say comes to pass, you can have what you say. Now, Jesus Christ dwells in the people. One day Christ was in the pillar of fire, that one you see taken, and, and we believe it is a Jehovah God. That's what the angel was trying to get us to. Now, he was in the fatherhood then. Uh, he was the father of Israel, a nation. Then he come and dwelt among his people as Christ the Son. Is that right? Christ is the Son of God. Now, he's Christ the Holy Spirit, which is the anointing. Christ means anointed. And the anointed one upon the people, Christ with us, the Holy Spirit, is Christ with us, in us. You believe that, but... Be real reverent now for just a moment. Okay, now he is the same. Now from confirmation of the ministry, and we just have a, about a handful of quotes, we'll close. The confirmation of the ministry said, now it's not, 
It's not you that does miracles. No, they want to say, let me see you, you do this. <clears throat> now, God never said for me to do it. He already done it. The only thing for me to do is to take his word and hold on to it, and it will bring it to pass. That's right. That's exactly. It isn't you. It's God that's in you. Like Jesus said, it's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what the Father, what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. He watched, his first, he, he watched first to see a vision, what the Father told him. St. John, I believe 519, you read 519. Yes, uh, if you read he, uh, what the Father shows me to do, that I do also. Again, from perseverance, he said, Now, God prepared him a body in the form of the Lord Jesus, which was the Christ, meaning the anointed one. And now, all that God was, was in Christ. He was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's what the scripture says. Now, all that God was, he poured out of Christ. Uh, uh, he poured out into Christ. He was Emmanuel, God with us. And all that Christ was, he poured out into the church. What is it? Anointed one to continue his work, that his word might live constantly. He lived by the, the word of the Father. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the church don't live by bread alone, but by the word of God, and uh, the word of Christ. And the Holy Spirit comes in and takes the word of Christ and makes it a living action. These signs shall follow them that believe. All right. For perseverance, he said, but let me tell you something encouraging. God takes his man, but his spirit stays here for another two. Yes. Somebody's going to receive that word. Somebody's going to be anointed one way or the other. It depends on what you, what spirits on the inside of this grain. That's the one you're going to believe it or not believe it. That's, well, you're... All right, and from this, this one, this quote is so tremendous that we could preach an entire sermon on it. He said, Christ means the anointed one. It's from the spoken words original seed. Christ means the anointed one, a man that was anointed, and God dwelling in him, what is it? The germ with the flesh, the anointed one, flesh being anointed with the Spirit of God, produced the Word of God made manifest. And we beheld him, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. See, there he was. See, he was God's word made manifest. And now he died in order to pay the debt of your high breeding. My, my. There it is, what it is. That you could die to yourself until you're no more yourself and be filled with his spirit, believing his word. Then the Holy Spirit that was in him comes down to water that word and make it grow. See, and then what is it? God manifesting, continuing the work of his first son, his only begotten, see, that died for our high breeding life, that he might reconcile us back to sons and daughters of God, that through the church might flow the same life by the word, continuing the word being manifested as it was in Christ. Christ was God's word made manifest. He died, gave his life, that he might send the spirit, take his body up and send his spirit back to water, pay the redeeming price if we'll believe it. That's right, that, uh, that, that's it right there if you believe it. He, he, he that believeth on me, the works that I do. Then come the Holy Spirit upon the same word. Now, you say, well, uh, where do you throw it upon the Bible then? The Bible's got to be in you. There it is. See, Gary? The Bible's got to be in you. The word is the seed. And as long as it's laying here, it won't do nothing. But when it comes in here, then it comes in the heart. Then it begins to manifest the Holy Spirit, the works of God. Then visions come. Powers come. Humility comes. All of your know-it-all is gone. You become nothing. Christ becomes alive. You die. He lives. There it is. Because he died, I live. When I die, he lives again. And when I die, he promised me life. And I died out to myself. So in order, I can have his life. And how do I do it? By taking his word, his seed. Put his seed in here by faith and believe it. And then it produces exactly what the Bible says. We're talking about the word of God is the anointing. People say, oh, praise God, I'm anointed. No, you're not. You're just yelling and screaming. That's not the anointing. The anointing is the word. You can preach without any emotion. And if the word is going forth in its trueness, that word is anointed. It'll catch a soul here or there. It'll quicken them to life. Now look, the body sure was Christ. It was the anointed one. And if Christ means the anointed one, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and he is the word, then the word is the anointing. There you go. If you abide in me and my word in you, then you say what you will. It's the word of God, the anointed word, that that's what does it. From he cares to you. What is the Messiah? The, Messiah the, the anointed one? The anointed what? The anointed word. 
and the word is made flesh. He that was he, he was that anointed word. You see that, Brother Vale? See? He is the anointed word. And from perfect faith, he said the word Christ means the anointed one. Just a person that's anointed, that is the Christ, the anointed one. How many knows that's true? That's the, that's the interpret, uh, the anointed one. There would be a man that would be anointed, anointed with what? The Bible said in Acts 2 that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, anointed with the Holy Ghost, went about and done great works and things that God manifested, proved that he was in this man. From sirs, we would see Jesus. He said, now, we find out. Uh, that the thing that identified him exactly being the Messiah was the prophet because Messiah means the anointed one. And anointed with what? The word. The word anointed is just like a seed with water on it is, is the right ground. Uh, in, in the right ground. It brings forth exactly as it's promised. From three kinds of believers said Christ is the anointed word. He is the word anointed. Christ means the anointed one. The anointed word for that day made manifest. You can't get around the fact that the anointing is the word. Hallelujah. That ought to give you more incentive to get into that word. What should we do with Jesus? He said, he had proven himself to be the Messiah because the Messiah was God. Messiah means anointed one. And he was anointed with the fullness of the Godhead bodily, dwelled in him. He wasn't just a prophet, yet he was a prophet, but he was more than a prophet. He was the Godhead bodily, dwelling in a human being known as the Son of God. <clears throat> and from uh, when their eyes were open, he said, now his corporal body sets it on the throne of God. Uh, he took, sat down on the throne of God, but the Holy Spirit is here, which is the Christ in spirit form. The word Christ means the anointed one, and that anointing was upon him, is upon the church, you all. From sirs, we would see Jesus, the word was made manifest in him. He was a complete anointed one. They had it by portion. We have it by portion. He was the anointed one. The entire plan of God laid in him. From questions and answers, he says, so get Christ in your heart. That's real. Christ and the Holy Spirit the same thing. Holy Spirit, Christ means the anointed one, and the Holy Spirit is that anointing. And you are the one that's anointed, see? And it's Christ in you anointing you. See See what I mean? Then you got the right thing. Then he can use you to anything he wants to use you in because you're in the body and subject to any of those gifts. From question and answer, he said, you remember my message of Messiah? You are, the word Messiah means an anointed, the anointed one. Now, you are, if you have the Holy Spirit, you become the anointed one. See, then there's all kinds of anointed ones. Now watch, if it's the Bible anointed one, many of them are anointed. See, the whole thing is in such a great conglomeration of every kind of mix-up of what Satan, with all of his cunningness, could uh, come up and impersonate just to the dot, almost to the dot. <clears throat> but there's only one way that you can absolutely be sure. Check the word by word by word by word. That's the only way that you can. Uh, but to me, as a person, William Branham or any other man or woman, to be the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, that is an error. But to be anointed with his spirit, which brings his own person of his life into you. And uh, just a few more. Uh, from who do you say this is? He said, give me a church that's so completely anointed with God till every action and move is thus, saith the Lord. Right in that kind of glory. I'll show you a, a, a Messiah, anointed one of God standing upon the earth. And from the paradox, the anointed one, Jesus the man, was the Son of God, but the anointed Holy Spirit was on him, was God. My Father dwells in me. See, it's the Holy Spirit, so it's still God. Now, if I can just get myself, uh, that man that can get himself out of the way, then that part's dead. Then let the, the Spirit of life go to work. See, that's why I wait just a minute to see what happens till the anointing gets started. And from the Easter cell, he said, His Messiah, anointed ones, believe that. What is Messiah? What is the Messiah? Messiah is anointed one. And now if he was the Messiah by being the anointed one for that day to fulfill the word of God, to be the redeemer and the anointed one, and God raised up that body, his bride is the anointed one for this day, and it's already raised with him in the resurrection because these two are one. And from Christ, the rising of the sun, he says, now, notice, Messiah, the anointed one, so is his bride, the Messiah, see, the anointed one. Now in closing, I would just like to read a quote that is familiar to all of you. But Brother Bram said in a sermon, Paradox, said now, and this little 12-year-old boy, no wisdom at all, but just a 12-year-old boy. See, the father didn't dwell in him at that time because he'd come on the day when he was baptized. He saw the Spirit of God coming down, see, and went in him. But look, this little 12-year-old boy, being the Word, he was born the Anointed One, see, to be the Anointed One. So my question for you is, if you are sons of God, how many believe they're a son of God? or daughter of God, all right? Then you were born to be the anointed one. You realize that? Let me give you scripture for it. Notice Brother Brown said he was born 
the, the anointed one. See, and, and so it, it born to be the anointed one. So if Jesus was to be the anointed one for his day, then what about this day? Our prophet has gone off the scene, but there's still a promise outstanding for this hour in Romans 8 of sons of God that will manifest as sons of God and sons that will be conformed to the image of the firstborn son and those with the spirit of adoption will grow up into Christ in all things. My question to you this morning is this. Are you born to be the anointed church? Are you born to fulfill those scriptures? Are you born to be that anointed ones? Then step into that word and watch what happens. And you can only do that by, de by dying out to yourself and let his anointing, his logos, his life, his word come in and have the preeminence. How many of you actually say, okay, Lord, you said there'll be sons of God that will be manifested. I'm claiming that. I'm asking you to help me to step into it. You said that we'd be conformed to the image of the firstborn son. I'm claiming that. I'm asking you to help me to step into that. You said that we would grow up into Christ in all things. I'm praying that you would help me to be that adopted son. Now, when William Branham saw Malachi 4, Revelation 10, uh, Luke 17, 30, he stepped into those things and that word became manifested. That became the manifested word for that, for that hour. But Moses has gone off the scene. And the children, under Joshua, Brother Brown said, our Joshua, the Holy Spirit, they took the land, they took the possession of what Moses had promised. What God had promised through Moses. We are living in a day that there will be sons of God who manifest son of God. There will be sons of God conformed to the image of the firstborn son. Now you can either accept it and step into it or say that's for someone else. Either way, I don't, I, I don't hold it against you if you don't want to believe it. That's your, your business. But as for me, I'm claiming it. I'm believing it. 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now, now, right now, are we sons of God? This hour, this very minute, are we sons of God? And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, at his appearing, his parousia, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. And Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's why Paul could say, now remember, without faith. What faith? There's only one Lord, one faith, right? Then without the faith of that one Lord. As Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. I am dead. Yet I'm living. Yet it's not me, Paul, that's living, but it's Christ that's living in me. And the life I'm now living in this flesh, I'm living by the same revelation, the faith of the Son of God. The revelation the Son of God had, I'm living by that same revelation. Are you? I hope you are. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is the Logos. It is the anointing. And may that anointed word enter our hearts and bring forth, Lord, that which you intended. For your word shall not go forth null and void, but it shall bring forth that which you sown it for. You said there will be a group of people who these signs shall follow them that believe. You said there will be a group of people that, that will be conformed to the image of the firstborn son. There will be sons of God that will manifest as sons of God. And even we know that now we're sons, and yet, Father, you said at the appearing, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And so our seeing you in your word as Jesus saw you in the vision, and we see you in the book of visions, and we see you in your word, then it is up to us to do what you've done. It's not up to the man. It's not up to our vessel. It's up to you, the anointed word in us, to produce the result. And so we just commit ourselves to whatever you would have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All we have to do is die to ourselves that Christ could live in us. Well, the Lord bless thee and keep thee, and may the Lord make his face to shine upon thee. That's uh, Numbers chapter 6, verse 22.